World Fund for Cities Development. Um, and um, we'll come back to all, all of these sort of organizations a bit later. So, what is um, sort of the, 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 uh, the challenges today? Well, of course, it's the urbanization and the climate change that are the two uh, foremost challenges uh, for, for local government. And, and this is affecting cities very much, you know, very, very much of the burden falls on, on the cities for, for, for these, these changes. I don't know if you know that uh, Sweden has actually been the fastest urbanization in Europe right now. So it's a big change in Sweden. People are moving from, from the countryside to the, to the, to the big cities. Uh, but of course, it, it's from, from a totally different point of view than, than maybe some other uh, uh, urbanized uh, European countries. But um, this is uh, one of the challenges that we, we have to deal with. And this also. Uh, the local government has to meet this with infrastructure investments, infrastructure in transport, in, 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 uh, in any other way of, of, of to, to promote the infrastructure to receive the, the new newcomers and, and also to uh, have a good service for those who have lived in the city before. Uh, and um, how could we uh, finance these investments? Of course, we have own revenue, taxes, charges, fees, uh, and so on, but uh, in many countries, and I, I must admit that I don't know this, uh, in detail about Kenya, but in many countries these are, are really limited for local authorities. Um, it's an area that needs to be developed, uh, but often it's also constrained by central government. Central government has its view on, on what uh, local government, do, which taxes they can raise, and so on. And so, um, there is also another thing about revenue, own revenue, and that is the collection rate. Um, in many countries, the collection rate is not really uh, very high, uh, and this is something that needs to be improved. I was um, uh, some months ago in, in South Africa, and um, uh, they, 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 in some local authorities, they do have a problem with, with the collection rates of, of charges, taxes, and, and so on. And um, this is something that needs to be addressed. But it's not always easy because, you know, there could be two reasons for, for the collection rates. One is the system is not really that efficient. The other could be that people are so poor that they really can't pay the, the, the rates. So that is a bit more difficult to solve in, in, in the short run, but, but um, um, this is something that needs to be addressed. The transfers are from, local, from central government to local government. In many countries, these are very high. Uh, High, high proportion of the income of the, of the local government. And, um, you know, it, it depends on how these are structured, whether they would be come with different the demands of how to use the money or not, but, but I believe that local government should have the possibility to, to rule for themselves how, how to use uh, their income uh, for, for different, different purposes. Um, bank loans has been, um, also a fact that for, for many local authorities to finance in, in local government investments. Uh, and if we talk about generally about debt, um, of course the, these has to be combined with, with some own sources or, or with, with uh, central government transfers. But I think that in the end, you know, uh, an investment in infrastructure is a long-term investment and the, the cost for that needs to spread, be spread out over the years. So. Uh, it's a question of having uh, different generations to pay for, for this investment, the, the generation that will use it in the future. So therefore I think it's a, it's a case for, for using debt uh, for financing uh, infrastructure investments. Um, lately, or, or there's been a, a case made for, for the public-private partnerships. Um, I think that that has changed a bit now because, uh, you know, there's been uh, lots of criticism of, uh, of uh, PVP and uh, I'm among those who criticize this system. Um, it's um, with the financing of uh, PVP, uh, the private sector is supposed to do the financing. The private sector is all, uh, has all, almost always more difficult to find financing than the public sector. It's almost more expensive. 
but then it's, it's argued that there will be more co cost efficiency if the, if the private sector were for it to be involved. And this has not really been proven. There's been lots of studies done, um, uh, in, for example, in the UK, where they used the PPP for a long time, and it's not been proven that it's really more efficient. It doesn't really over, overrule the, the, the uh, higher cost of finance. Transfer of risk is, a, is another thing that says that you transfer the risk to the, public, to the private sector. Many times you find that the public sector is stuck with some of the risk that they can't really control. So it's, um, it, there is also a question of uh, uh, you need to be very skilled to negotiate one of these things because otherwise you will, stop, you will be stuck with, with uh, these risks. Uh, let me just uh, skip down to, to the procurement process. <coughs> Big PPP projects is uh, really dif difficult to procure. Um, in Sweden, we actually have one or two PPP projects. One of them is the new big hospital here in Stockholm. And it was decided to do this as a PPP project. But they decided that we'll do it as a PPP pro pro project if we get competition in the bidding. They ended up, ended up with one bid but they still went on doing it. And this is the thing with big projects, you know. It's so costly for, for, for the, 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 the private co corporation to actually produce a bid, so they can't really afford to lose it. Um, so that's why it's, uh, it, it is, the procurement process has been more and more difficult. And then, uh, uh, lastly, the, the secondary market. Uh, many of these people, are sold on to, to other, other owners in, in the future and, and uh, we can see huge profits in selling these. And then you might, must uh, wonder who is paying these profits. Of course it's the public sector because it's the public sector that, that will, will pay the PPP so, so therefore it, it is uh, totally up to, uh, to money from, from, from uh, the public sector. And um, I use sometimes this uh, cartoon from, uh, I think it was uh, the Times or something, um, with the PPP in the UK, 70% extra cost. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if, if I, I would um, uh, say that this is true, but, but um, uh, I think that you should be aware of PPP, um, that it's really very, very difficult to negotiate a, a very efficient PPP. So, coming back to, to uh, um, you have, uh, you, between bank loans and, and the bond issues, you, you, you uh, bank loans uh, uh, in many countries has been, been financing local government uh, infrastructure investments. But now we have an upcoming international regulation for banks that will make it more difficult for banks to finance local authorities. It will be, we've seen, uh, in Europe, and, and, and actually I've seen it in South Africa as well, that um, uh, the margins of bank loans to local government has gone up quite substantially, and the maturities has gone down. Uh, so this is, well, I don't think really that this will be the, a main option in the future to, to uh, finance true bank loans. But then we, we do have bond issues in the capital market, and I think this could be a very efficient way uh, to finance. But again, I would very much agree with what, what Marco said. In many countries, this is not a question of going to the international capital market, even though I will describe some, some of these uh, deals that I've done. For many countries, it, it would mean to see if there's a domestic market, because you need to be borrowing in your own currency. You can't afford to take currency risks in the beginning. It needs to be done in a very cautious way. So, uh, but with bond issues, it's, it's a question of, do you really have the size in, in a local authority to go to, to, the, to the market? You need to have some, some, some size of the, of the borrowing needs. You need to have some size in order to, to, to put down the sort of, to, to, to limit the costs of, uh, of the bond issue and in order to be attractive to, to investors. So a way that um, I've been working very much with during uh, a long time is um, actually um, 
cooperation between local authorities, where they actually pool together their borrowing needs and they together go to the market to, to uh, finance their investments. And this is something that we'll refer to as a uh, pool financing mechanism here. Um, and um, we will come back to, to uh, how this is discussed in different countries later, but first let me explain how this works in, in sort of in, in, uh, um, in uh, sort of an overview. Uh, if you use uh, this type of cooperation between local authorities, it can provide you with access to capital markets. It will lower the cost of borrowing because the capital markets are much more efficient than if you go to a bank for the bank and, and, and get a loan. Uh, it will certainly lower the processing costs of, of uh, borrowing. <coughs> uh, since you do have a bigger volume, you, you, can, you can use uh, that volume to, to uh, negotiate uh, uh, the processing costs. And it lowers the risk because if you have sufficient volume in your borrowing, you can diversify that borrowing to different investors, um, different um, maturities, different instruments, if, if that is the case in the, in, in the domestic capital market. So it, it actually lowers the risk also to uh, that uh, if you have a joint body that, that will borrow for the local government, they can employ financial expertise for, to, to carry out the, the borrowing in the capital market. Because I mean, we have to see that a local government's um, uh, task is not to be financial experts. It's, it's to, to do sort of the, the budget in, in their hometown, it's to, to provide this local services, but it's not something, the, the financial markets are complicated and you need to have experts on your side to, to do this. If you apply this in the right way, it could also be an incentive to improve the credit worthiness of the local governments. And this is something that I find to be really very, very important in many uh, emerging and developing countries today, that you need to have a driver for the local government to improve their financial situation um, and to, in order to be uh, able to, to go to, to the market but, and also to be able to able to function well um, uh, in, um, in their context. Um, there is also a case um, it, when, when I will, will present the different agencies uh, um, in, in Europe and elsewhere uh, where you can say that these are centers for, for, for transfer of knowledge. Transfer of knowledge uh, to the local authorities. There is a very uh, 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 very intense communication between uh, these agencies, vehicles um, uh, that the local government have created and the local government themselves. We'll come back to that. So, when it comes to pool financing, this could be done in, in many different ways. And just let me uh, talk about, firstly, the, the sort of basic level. If you do have a number of local authorities that, that could um, have a corporation. Uh, they could exchange back best practices. They couldn't coordinate the borrowing, but they wouldn't do it uh, jointly. So look, this is the basic uh, uh, set of of, um, of uh, food financing. You can see in some countries that local governments have been cooperating very very closely, and sometimes they have appointed one joint uh, financial uh, uh, officer for, for, for two or three local authorities uh, in order to coordinate their, their activities uh, in these uh, cases. And I believe that we will see more and more of cooperation between local authorities in the future uh, since the challenges are rising more and more. Than. The second or the medium uh, level of, of uh, 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 cooperation between local authorities would be a so-called club deal. This is when a number of local authorities would issue a bond in the capital market, but they do it not with a joint responsibility, but um, with several responsibilities. Each local government are 
responsible for their part of the club deal. Um, and this has been done in many countries, and I would recommend this as a first step uh, if um, you would start with um, uh, applying uh, food financing in any country. Because it gives very good experiences for both of the domestic capital market of, uh, and not at least how it is to cooperate with other local authorities. Because sometimes it's, it's not really that easy. I, I know when I started Moon Invest that I really had to convince local governments to cooperate. Uh, sometimes they view each other as, as competitors and, uh, and not really are very keen to, to work together. We have had seen the same thing in, in, in other countries. Uh, but um, this is, could be a very good uh, first step in, in uh, cooperation. Uh, but the advanced uh, level of uh, uh, working together 